Hello, everyone, and welcome to another delightful episode of the Conversations with Goats podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I have already been having a delightful conversation with Orville Ray Wilson. Uh, let me introduce him, and then we'll uh, we'll pick up right where we left off. He's already given me some some smiles and some things to think about, and I'm excited to share them with you, or I'm excited for us to share them with you. But first, Orville Ray helps professionals build their businesses by becoming thought leaders, working on writing, stagecraft, and marketing, and with 40 years on the international speaking circuit under his belt, that ain't just whistling Dixie, he knows exactly how to help professionals in creating entertaining, content-rich presentations that effectively grow their businesses. Orville, you've been on before, had a delightful conversation with you then. I'm Thank reminded you. of how much fun I had last time just by talking with you before I hit record. So welcome back to the podcast and thanks for being here. It's an honor and a pleasure, Kevin. Thank you. So we were we were spitballing topics to talk about and you had a few that came to mind and there was one in particular that I found, I immediately responded to. It's something that both, it comes up in a number of different ways in a number of kinds of conversations I tend to have. And I want to mm -hmm. explore it with you for a little while. We were talking about thinking about how you, as a coach, which means you're a business owner, um, how you deal mm -hmm. with price objections or when people come to you or people are a client of yours or are thinking of becoming a client of yours and whatever their status is, they their excuse that they make, their reason for not staying with you or choosing to hire you as their coach is, well, you're too expensive or it's too much or money I, right now or cash flow is kind of a problem. Let's circle back in three months, six months, whatever. It's some, so, some sort of price objection. So let's talk about that a little bit from your perspective. How have you how have you dealt with in the past and how do you deal with today whenever you encounter a, a objection like that, that, that you're too expensive or that coaching is too expensive? Well, the first thing, you know, I, I, I wrote the books on guerrilla marketing along with a handful of other people. One of the best selling books in that series was guerrilla selling. And, mm -hmm. and so we have kind of an unconventional approach to, you know, sales generally. And one of the things that I always taught people was to recognize that Price objections are actually a buying signal. They wouldn't object to your price if they weren't seriously considering your offering. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would also advise most coaches that you probably don't charge enough, especially if you're good. True. It, I mean, it's not, you know, my fees are pretty high. It's $20,000 a year to work with me. And most clients earn that back in the first 90 days. I had one mm -hmm. client who earned that back 21 days after we started. He had $28,000 prepaid fees for speeches that he was scheduled to give over the next six months. Just, awesome. uh, you know, a bang. So coaching can, it can have a tremendous impact on your business and, and, and a great multiplier effect. But it, but it is, you know, it is it, 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 kind of an interesting discussion. And it, and it can be really scary for clients. I, I had a conversation earlier today about a client of a client. And this woman has been with this coach for a while. She took her business from $11 million last year to, in 21, to over $50 million in 22. And now she's going through a cash flow squeeze and saying, you know, gosh, I really, you know, I, I can't justify this. You, you know, it's, it's too expensive. I can't afford it. This woman also works with two or three other coaches and has just bought herself an, a luxury car and been on <laughs> an expensive vacation. And so the, the discussion was around how do you get the client, this client to acknowledge the value that you've created together? Yeah. And, you know, what kind of questions might lead to that? And you know, I, I, I suppose my, my first thought about that would be you can't lose what you ain't got. One of the most valuable lessons I learned in, in life is was you can't lose what you ain't got. Uh, the Dalai Lama says all suffering is the result of attachment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get attached to clients. And and when, for whatever reason, they decide to withdraw from our practice, we we, we, we tend to take that personally. Yeah, uh, it's and, natural. And, and we shouldn't. So, you know, as, as part of your regular coaching practice, one of the things that you should do, I, I think, is at the end of each call is to ask them, you know, well, Kevin, let me, let me summarize uh, this conversation by asking you, what, what are the most valuable things that you've taken away from this conversation? Mm. And how are you going to apply them over the, the next week or whatever mm. your, your cadence with them is? That does a number of things. First of all, it 
anchors the value in the mind of the client. Yeah, that was a really terrific insight that you had about you know why I'm having trouble getting my book written. That I just you know lifted the scales from my eyes or whatever. And <laughs> having them articulate that verbally really helps cement the value in their mind. It also gives you feedback about which part of the conversation had the greatest impact for that client. And there's an accountability element because now you're challenging them. Okay, <laughs> well let's let's <laughs> take this out into the world and, and and make it work. You know, let's mm-hmm. make the change. You know, the, you change the behavior, make the call. You know, call. You know, do the outreach because I'm going to ask you about that next week. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes accountability is the most valuable thing that we can offer a client in those in those terms. So, you know, it's it's a sensitive area to try not to rub it. As you said, as you alluded to earlier, this is a deep conversation. What's yeah. what's been your experience with that issue? It's been it's been fascinating just both from like a thirty thousand foot sort of high concept perspective and also a mm-hmm. brass tax in the middle of a sales conversation talking about like how the numbers work and how how the value translates between between myself and a client. I've been on both sides of that part of the conversation too. And I find One thing I find that it comes back to frequently, especially in the context of coaching or anything that's even really close to coaching, where there's a lot of of present service value in the ongoing Mm -hmm. relationship. It's not just like you purchased a program, you've got the steps, you got the PDF booklet, and now you're just like running a script. It's like the active relationship between the coach or the guide or the counselor or whoever happens to be is really where the value rests. But it can be sometimes difficult to understand that in the moment. And also, I think there is a, I don't want to say a disconnect, but there are there's sometimes a temptation to consider coaching or anything coaching-like as an expense as opposed to mm-hmm. an investment. Right. An expense, and again, it's right there in the word when people say you're too expensive or you're too pricey. It's like, well, I understand that there is a monetary value here. Like, you know, it's 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 numbers on a on a spreadsheet. Sure. It's going to have an effect. But in terms of how you think of it, an expense is something you think of as leaving you. It's like, this costs me this. Mm-hmm. Investment, there's things going, there's something leaving you, and there's something coming back. An investment, whether it's going to pay off in the short term, medium term, long term, or all of the above, an investment has a different place in people's minds. And getting people to not just understand once, but to kind of internalize that the coaching relationship and the, the money put towards coaching is an investment in present and future success really right. helps to change the tenor of the conversation because then I'm not trying to get them to release, to give something up. I'm trying to convince them that they are getting something or remind them that they are getting something of present and future value. And that's always like, and that can be tricky. And like you you acknowledge this too, and I feel like this is important too, and this comes up in all sorts of coaching conversations. Uh-huh. There are times where it's the right move for a client to at least temporarily move on from a coach, like the, a purpose sure. has been served. And there's a time where, you know, I think we need to put this in for this relationship on the back burner, maybe come back around to it. There are times where that's the right decision. And I, one thing I love about pretty much every coach I speak to, yourself included, is that you understand that. Whether there's, there's, a, t- there's a season for all things, as they say, as it's right. sung. Um, and that's, that's an important aspect of this to acknowledge too, I think, is that there are times when it is the right move. Where I and where I get my where I'm always very I have like a little a little a yellow caution flag is whenever people start talking about expense where they're objecting based mm-hmm. on the price where you could tell they're they're making calculations on a spreadsheet as opposed to value judgments about a relationship and that always reminds me to try to reframe the conversation in a way that's going to serve both of us whether I'm whether I'm on the receiving sure. end or I'm on the giving end. And so that's that's one thing that I think about a lot in this context is that expense versus investment dichotomy. Well, you know, even the federal government recognizes that professional development, professional coaching, executive coaching is a legitimate business investment. It's tax mm-hmm. deductible. You know, those of you doing your taxes this time it's that time of year. Yes. Uh, so so yeah, and 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 it can can pay big. You know, I work with subject matter experts who you know, become influencers and eventually thought leaders. An example is Terry Moore. Terry is an attorney in Minneapolis, and he was attending a an advanced storytelling lab that I was teaching, a master class I was teaching for the National Speakers Association, a chapter there where he was a member. 
and I had talked briefly about the importance of writing a book. And he, you know, he, he came up to me as, as, as people often do. He says, you know, I've been thinking about writing a book uh, to grow my law practice. I said, okay, well, what sort of book do you think I should write? I said, well, that, Terry, you're asking the wrong question. Mm-hmm. The question to ask is, what sort of clients do you want more of? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. He says, he says, well, you know, I really like these business divorce cases. Or really, like married couple has a business and they're getting divorced. He says, no, no, that's a whole other thing. No, it's more like two guys in college get together and they start up a little business and it and it grows and it's successful. And, you know, 30 years later, you know, one of them gets caught with his hand in the till or he's he's having an affair with the other guy's wife or, you know, these things happen or or one of them wants to retire a boat in Florida. The other guy wants to franchise out, build an empire. And now you've got to un- unravel the hairball. And uh, these cases can be they're really interesting uh, and they're also really lucrative because there's often tens of millions of dollars on the table at stake. And, and yeah. uh, well, that sounds interesting. Do you know enough about business divorce to write a whole book, a 140 page book about it? Oh, yeah, I've been doing this 20 years. And so, and so we did. We worked on this book over a span of about eight months. This is at the height of just, we had met just before the, all the lockdowns kicked in, hmm. you know, March, this is March of 2020. So we worked through the rest of 2020 on getting the book written. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, it, it, as soon as the book was available, we created a half day webinar for attorneys based on this book and applied for and got certification for continuing legal education credit. Ooh. And then started offering this webinar to bar associations all over the country. If you're an attorney, you have to keep up with your CLUs to you know, maintain your license. And nobody would, nobody could go anywhere. And hmm. And so this solved a very real problem in the market. And so he started doing these webinars for bar associations and he stopped, stopped showing up for appointments. And, you know, he kind of went, he kind of went dark on, on me. And, you know, finally, you know, back in February of last year, he called to say, gosh, I'm really sorry. I know I should have been in touch, but I've just been, I, I you know, I have to tell you that my three-year rolling average was about 750 take home. This year, it's 1.25 million. So he had added $500,000 take home to his law practice as a direct result. He said, "I've got 14 of these business divorce cases. <laughs> I might play. I could. I you know. I I I just I'm scrambling to try and keep up. That's what I would call a best-selling book." Yeah. You know, uh, you know, write write a book that sells you, and so I, I'm sure he would argue that uh, that whatever the investment was in his coaching it, it had been uh, a good investment. Mm-hmm. And I have a shelf full of of books and success stories like that <laughs> from clients, that, you know, that I've worked with. You know, sometimes I, you know, they tell me the stories, and I, I'm sitting there going. Oh my God, I could raise my feet. <laughs> I mean, it's true too. It's true. And it's, that's often, I find that so many coaches and entrepreneurs in general, they struggle even before they have their first conversation about it with mm. how to, how to, how to monetarily value their services. Cause it's, it's always, it's a very tricky conversation to have with yourself. Right. And then it become, it continues to be a tricky conversation to have with others because you want to correctly value your contribution mm-hmm. to who you're providing your services to and for in a way that maintains accessibility to the clientele that you wish to serve. And there's a good, there's a good push pull there. And I feel like a good relationship with your pricing is a living relationship. It ought to be a moving target because the manner in which you provide value and the degree of that value that's provided can change from person to person. And I'm thinking you reminded me by using a, a lawyer who was a client as an example of how c- certain uh, lawyers very frequently do t- take cases pro bono, which essentially means mm-hmm. for free. And there are right. many purposes that that serves, but it is an active part of what they see as their contributing value. It's an, it's an right. active expression of their profession and their passion, what they're doing for a living, what they're doing with their life. It's and there's Latin, always, and it literally means for the good. Exact, exactly. Yeah. And there's a, there's a balance there too with how you, especially as a coach, how you, your relationship to your price, your monetary cost for your services rendered, programs offered, and guidance as it continues on. 
and that's I feel like it's 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 something that because it's challenging, at least at first blush, it's very challenging. It can stay tricky. A lot of coaches and a lot of entrepreneurs will turn away from having that conversation. They'll just like lock their price in. It's kind of like not think about it or not really engage with it. And so I, I, I like that we're shining a light on it because it's it's there's a lot of aspects to it that are really important, like how you value your coaching, how your clientele, not just like your general clientele, not just imaginary person X. But your ideal clients, the kind of clients who are in the profession or in the stage of their career or business that you are wanting to serve, that you feel like you have the most to offer to, how does your value translate to them? The easiest way to figure that out is to talk to them about it. But it's one of the harder sure. conversations to have, isn't it? <laughs> or it, right. can be, it can be among the harder conversations to have. Well, a good question there is, is to ask, well, where do you want to be a year from now? Mm. You know, on, on the 17th of January, 2023. Where do you want to be? What do you want to have? What do you want to have more of in your life? What do you want to have less of? What does that look like? Do you want more money? What, do you want more time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you want to? You know, do you want to travel the world? Do you want to see? You know, do you want to be on, you know, big stages in front of association conferences? Do you want to have, you know, you work part time and and have a, a small handful of white gloves clients that, pay you very well and you have a nice relaxed life. I mean, whatever. Yeah, so so when you get them to spell out the vision of where they're trying to go and w work through the math of what that would be worth to them, not only monetarily, but in terms of lifestyle, in terms of time with family, you know, in terms of personal development growth, then I think it's, it's a lot easier to justify your fees. Uh, I, you know, I also believe that if a prospect doesn't stop breathing a little bit, when you quote the numbers, <laughs> and maybe you should, maybe you're not charging a, enough. Excellent um, point. <laughs> nothing commits a client like cash, mm -hmm. you know. And so, if if they, it, what, one of the clients I coach is is an executive coach in Aspen, and his clients fly in, often in their own jet, to meet with him, Ooh. twice a month. And it's $75,000 a year in full, in advance, non-refundable, no questions asked. And uh, he's, he's very selective about, you know, who he takes on, yeah. but he's also had clients who have been with him for 10 years who have built multi-million dollar enterprises multiple times over the arc of th that work together. So it, yeah, it, 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 it's a, it's a deep topic. Yeah. That's a great example because I feel like that's another thing too, that's really important to, to bring out whenever you're having a conversation, be it with a client or someone for whom you are a client is that, that money, that monetary investment is right. also a commitment. And one thing that is absolutely crucial to coaching, having the desired effect is that mm -hmm. you show up and do the work. It's, it's, it's not just, I mean, you can't phone it in. That's why sometimes you really, you're almost better off pricing things a little higher because when someone's a little uncomfortable, when someone's, when someone's butt cheeks tighten up a little bit, when they first see your price and then they pay it, you know what they're not going to do? They're not going to come in, have, go off half cock. They're not going to not pay right. attention. They're not going to metaphorically or literally sit at the back of the class and like be listening to a podcast or, you know, doing something else. They're going to show up. They're going to pay attention because they've already paid money for it. They better pay attention to it. And they're going to extract the most value they can. They're going to do the homework. They're going to do the active work. And they're going to invest in the relationship with their time and their attention because their time and their attention is going to follow their money. Absolutely. Well, here's a, here's a question I like to pose to you again from this conversation I had with the client earlier today. She was asking, well, you know, this, this, this woman is going through a cash squeeze She's expecting a grant from the government, you know, to come through in the next few months. And she's asking if I would uh, let her continue in the program, you know, for free until her, you know, uh, until she has the ability to pay again. Hmm. So what's, what do you think about, you know, coaching clients for free, you know, e either as an uh, over the interim or under particular circumstances or as a trial or. I like. What are your thoughts of, about that, Kevin? Yeah, there's a couple of things there I like because you use two words there, like circumstance and as a trial. I'll start with the, I'll start with trial first because and and this is I mean one maybe one of the it's maybe not the best example, but I'm going to use it anyway because it's it's very on point. 
one of the cardinal tenets of drug dealing is everybody gets the first taste for free. <laughs> but, but but there's real there's real value in considering it. it's not just you're not just trying to like chemically addict someone to something, but like there's real value in letting someone get a real entry level experience of what it's going to be like. Let them get a taste because sometimes they just mm-hmm. don't know. It's a lot of a lot of a lot of reticence that comes with committing to a coach can be. I, I find that it frequently is. I'm not really sure what that's going to look like for me. Like they've never done it before, or maybe they had like a not so satisfying experience. And so sometimes a little taste, whether that's in the form of like a free webinar or that's mm-hmm. some sort of like booklet or worksheet or some, something that you put together, that's, you know what, just see it, see if you're picking up what I'm putting down. See if we're a good fit. Get to know me a little bit. Maybe you've got a YouTube channel where you've got some videos going and they can actually see you in action or they can like hear you speak or get an idea of what your concepts are. And they're like, oh, okay, I want to learn more. And then maybe there's like, for example, the free, the free chemistry call, the little 20 minute, 30 minute, maybe an hour where it's just like, you know what, come on, let's just chat a little bit and see if, see if I have something to offer you. That can be an amazing obstacle circumventer because then, then a lot of their fears, a lot of their strongest fears are going to be allayed by the fact that they've gotten a taste of what the value they're going to get out of this relationship might look like. And they mm-hmm. want to know more. And that want is going to help buoy them past any any wallet tightening they might be feeling. The second right. thing you mentioned, the other one you mentioned is circumstances. Mm-hmm. Now I'm a, right. I really do feel like there's a case by case basis here because you do have to pay attention for someone who is just whether through good intentions or not or poorly formulated intentions or not are just going to try and take advantage of a situation. And right. I am I am someone who tends to err on the side of generosity as I learn to keep an eye out for people who are just looking to take advantage or just looking to cut corners. And so really that's one of those that I would judge on a case by case basis. There are certain clients of mine that are, they're not going to get a free lunch because I know, and mm-hmm. and these are people that I, I love and respect and admire, but I understand what happens if the circumstances shift in that particular way. And so I'm just not going to let that happen. That's going to damage the relationship for all parties involved. If I let, if I let us go down that road. So that's a line that I'll hold. There are others where I'm, I'm, not that I understand their situation more, but I just, I feel like I understand them better and know that if I give them a little bit of slack and let them make ends meet, that they're going to come through on the other end in a way that's actually going to deepen and improve our relationship. Now, I'm making it sound very clear cut just because I'm thinking of like specific examples in mind, but a lot of times it can be very tricky. So I really feel like that's got to be circumstantial. My, my initial feeling is don't think about it, have a conversation about it. Before before you consider giving anything away for free, unless you're just trying to hook somebody on your on your on your drugs, and in that case, you know, the first one's free. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll give anyone an you know an hour just for asking. That's you know that's part of what I do. I mean, you know, I have colleagues uh, all over the world in the National Speakers Association. That I've I've been part of that professional group for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that little tiny skinny niche, I was an international celebrity. <laughs> and and so I get inquiries from from colleagues all the time, and I'm delighted to help anybody I can. That's I, that's I, that's why I'm in this business is to help people. So if any of your listeners w- would like to take advantage of my ridiculously generous good nature, just send an email to uh, Orville Ray at gmail dot com, and I'll spell that O R V E L R A Y at gmail dot com, and I'll send you back a link, and uh, we'll get on the calendar and. And we'll get some coffee and we'll talk, you know. Uh, I'm I'm very selective <laughs> about about who I take on, and it might be the you know two or three sessions before I, I'll make that commitment. I mean, we talked on the other side about fees and committing and money and all that, but that's mm-hmm. also true for us as coaches. Right. Uh, you, you only have so many slots in my practice, and if I'm going to take somebody on for a year, you know, we're going to spend more time talking together than I spend with my wife. <laughs> really? Really? It is. Uh, yeah. yeah and, and that's a, that's a big, a big commitment. And it's a big risk for us as coaches because you don't want people who aren't going to do the work, who aren't going to show up, who aren't, you know, all in. So I'm very generous on the front end. And then when, you know, we both agree that they have gotten uh, deep value from the work together, then maybe then we talk about fees and then you know and what that structure might look like and what kind of commitments we're making to each other going forward because it's not a you know it's not a transactional relationship it's mm-hmm. it's 
it, you know, working with a coach is perhaps one of the most intimate and, and life changing relationships in your, in your business, in your career. It, it, it can literally transform your life. Mm -hmm. uh, clients who have engaged me, you know, to help them write a book and we wind up talking about issues with their spouse or, you know, r raising kids. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm nearly 70 now and I raised two happy, successful boys. And so, yeah, I have a point of view about those things or, hmm. or, you know, sometimes we wind up talking about fly fishing. I don't know. It, 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 <laughs> it can affect many aspects of, of your life. I had a client come in recently who said to another colleague, you know, Orville helps me in ways that I didn't even know I needed help. Hmm. And, and so it's, you know, it's, it's an important investment. It's an important commitment, but it's also, it has to be reciprocal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, it's been a, it's been a real pleasure, Kevin. I, yeah. I, you had some great ideas. It's been a really productive conversation. Good. Yeah. For me too. I'm so glad to have you back on. Like I, it's, this was, yeah, it was fantastic. We covered, we started with one topic. We ended up covering so much <laughs> about the, the coaching <laughs> relationship and the coaching business and yeah, fly fishing, parenting, public speaking, coffee talk, coffee talk and everything in between. <laughs> and I may, I'll go ahead and make sure to spell out correctly your email address in the show notes. If you want to talk to Orville, he has an opening in his, in his practice right now. You should have a conversation with him. You've, you've listened to us talk. You may have heard our previous episode. I'll also put links to his LinkedIn profile. It's fairly well established and active there. Um, and also, is it gorillagroup.com? Is that still a good place to, to to learn more about you? Maybe not connect with you, but to still learn more about yeah. you and what you've done? It's gorilla, G-U-E-R-R-I-L-L-A, -L -L as in gorilla <laughs> warfare.com. And uh, yeah, you can read all about my practice and the work I do at, at that website. Excellent. Thank you, Kevin. Well, yeah, of course, of course. I'll have everything in the show notes. And hey, to the audience, yeah, you've heard this episode. You want to learn more about Orville, trust me. Just click the links, go find out more about him. It's great. If you have the privilege, chat with him. Excellent conversationalist. And for us here today, we will talk to you again very soon.